Vehicle One, a very warm welcome to a special show. Today I'm joined by a very, very interesting guest, a man who, who wears many feathers in his cap. His name is Jonas Kelberg. He's most famously known as the co-founder or the co-creator of Skype. But uh, beyond that uh, credential, he has many more. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's an author. He managed to sell iCloud to Apple. He's on the board of IKEA. Uh, he's made some investments right here in India. And of course, uh, you know, he also currently earns a living with uh, the Boston Consulting Group Digital Venture currently. We don't know what you do next, but yeah, that's what you do right now. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Jonas. Truly a pleasure. Thank you. So, you know, um, I've researched you a bit because that's my job. And uh, one of the most interesting and standout statements you make uh, is when you ask people saying what wins, mm -hmm. right? Uh, fast versus slow, big versus small. And I love the fact that you said that it was a tricky question because when you're looking at successes, uh, usually the, the fast or the agile beats the slow. But when you look at, let's say, failures, the big eats the small. Uh, you know, for my audience and, you know, for the sake of myself, could you explain to me how exactly that functions, you know, in your own personal extremely maverick-like journey? Well, I think it's, it's an interesting perspective because I think my life has always been, you know, game changing. It's the fast that beat the slow and, and so on. And, but when that happens, when you need to be fast is when the whole you know, industry is in a disruption. Uh, when tech, tech enables people to change business model. But in many cases, you know, like food retail and others, it has been difficult because the most big companies, they don't want change. So, and if you cannot unlock that and the technology is not strong enough, you know, a lot of industries continue. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that is the challenge because if you really want to do something that's super disruptive like Skype, you're going up against all the telcos in the world. Right. And right. then no of them wants you to succeed. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do everything in their power for you not to get shut down or not succeed. Mm -hmm. And also the consumers think you're mad. It's like, why should this ever work? You don't have a business model. You know, everything's going to be chaos. Um, so I think you need to really rethink that perspective. So that's interesting you say that because, you know, I mean, you are the co-founder of Skype. So for instance, when Skype was at its epitome, right, I don't think anybody, uh, whether it be in India or globally, has not used Skype. Um, but do you think Skype has managed to reinvent itself uh, because of the fact that today, you know, video calling is such a mass commodity, right? And, and that was their primary and their most attractive offering. Do you think Skype has gone beyond, has Skype disrupted itself? No, I, I don't think so. And I think they are very, very similar to, you know, a lot of companies. Yeah. You build something on a totally, first you're a, a game changer. You're totally against society. No one really likes you. You're a small company. You're the outsiders, you know. And then over time, you become the incumbent. You become the successful company. You attract other people. And instead of really taking the product beyond, you get a lot of, you know, smart people on board and they listen to the consumer then consumer wants more features on the product and then you build more and more features and the become products becomes more and more complex and better and then whoops something happens and then there's a new product which only does maybe one thing does it super simple and people just love it because they you have rethought the perspective Right, right. So you're, you're absolutely right. And I'm glad that, you know, you accept this uh, with, with all honesty. Uh, so do you think today most companies are struggling with the fact that they're not able to disrupt because essentially they're just too big to make that change? And if that is the case in the future, do you think the big will still eat the small as it has been the mantra for like eons? I think, first of all, you need to say, OK, is this new technology change the perception of revenue. If you look at Kodak, when they died, people said, okay, they didn't invent, you know, couldn't adapt to the digital camera. They invented the digital camera, but what happened is that the cost of storage mm. or the revenue for storage of photos went from, you know, billions of dollars to zero because the cost of storing sure. uh, a photo on a digital is zero. So the whole industry just disappeared mm -hmm. and they couldn't adapt. So what I often say, the challenge for large corporates today is not is that most of the people on board that large corporate right. are in love with the existing business model. 
because that's the one that's they know, so that's what they do. The challenge is not, you know, accept, is it for the old people to accept that we have a new business model right. that has totally different fundamentals, which are totally different value. If you take retail, you know, they are really good at, you know, building shops, running a shopping center, uh, getting products through the door. And you would need to accept that Alibaba has no inventory. So it's a total way new business model of True. doing retail, True. and they're doing it more e efficient. True. So the challenge here is one, accepting new technology enables the whole industry mm. to, to the, the revenue to just go through the window. Sure, sure. And you sure. can see that in the music industry, you know, in the, yeah. during, uh, during yeah. you know, the peak. Um, Napster. 10 years ago, the CDs were making billions of dollars. Yeah. And then the music industry invented the DVD, so you could actually sell music and video. Mm, mm, mm. And people were projecting it to go through the roof. And then, you know, came Napster, and then it was Casa, now Spotify. Yeah. And 80% of the revenue from the music industry for, for record sales is gone. Right, right. But still, there's one player like Spotify and iTunes that now take nearly, you know, most of the value creation in this business. So what is your view of, you know, how we stand today with our tech giants, our, our, you know, duopoly, as people call it, or the three big titans? So today we're, you know, in, if you talk about the digital world, you, ca you have Google, Facebook, of course, Amazon becoming an extremely formidable player. But that's the model for today, mm? right? Uh, and, and since you've been a man who's disrupted and, and loves yeah, yeah. you know, destroying and disruption, yeah, yeah. do you think all these companies will remain as is, will grow bigger from strength to strength even five years from now? Or do you see the marketplace you know, seeing some extreme disruption when one talks of digital and the way we see it today? I think if you look at Amazon and Alibaba, I think you know, their, their, their biggest next change is, is you know, who invents the whole postal system. Mm. Because if you can play with it, I would say like maybe 80, 90 percent of all sa retail sales is going to go online. So the one, the person and the company that today can rethink the whole logistics system mm -hmm. is going to be super interesting. And you see Amazon is already moving in that direction. Sure, yeah. So I think Amazon is a good company of that constantly, you know, is willing to, you know, try to involve themselves going from selling things to marketplace, mm. AWS, mm. I would guess that they're going to rethink their whole logistics as well and maybe become the big strongest logistics player. But I have no clue. This is just, you know, where, <laughs> where, where I would be, oh, be, yeah. be rethinking the perspective because I think that that's, that's specifically in retail. Um, I think when it comes to the whole, uh, I think also super interesting in the whole sharing economy, you see Lime and Bird and all of these, you know, scooter sharing perspective. Sure. People looked at cars, mm. but then, you know, it's something else that is so p super much cheaper that people are actually, you know, seeing to enjoy and gets you because they found a different place in the market to right. do that. Right, right. So, so we often look at the problem with the same existing functions and we change one part. When success is there, is you need to change a lot of different things at the same time. Yeah, so how do you essentially spot trends in an extremely unstructured and fast changing world? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, because I know that since you're a serial entrepreneur, you also fund on a lot of companies. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know your, your success ratio, uh, but uh, you know, how do you identify the right trends, the right companies, so that you are future ready? I mean, as much as one can be, you know? Well, I think it's a, it's a very interesting question. I often talk about, if you look at a trend, mm. I think as an as industry leader, as an entrepreneur, you need to ask yourself, is this trend going to go to 100%? Mm. Because that's if you look at you know cars, you look at VCRs. You, uh, there are so many trends, mobile telephony. You need to say, okay, is this a trend that is going to go to 100% adoption? Internet telephony. Everyone has an internet telephony client, mm -hmm. because what we do is we look. Oh, it grows one to two percent, three next year, four to five, and then we constantly find a way to argue why this trend is not going to change. So I think the most interesting thing you need to have in a boardroom is to say, is this trend going to be 100%? Mm. That goes for media companies as well. Sure, sure. Because we... I mean, we're we, going we, through we, some serious crisis. Yes, yeah. and, and, and so what happens is that you cling on to your existing business model because it's generating really good money, it's really good business. Mm, mm, mm. But you need to accept and try to, and that's my philosophy, is this trend going to 100%? And if I believe that that trend is going to 
um, then I want to invest behind it. But I often do it when the trend is half a percent or one percent, so then people think I'm mad. Okay. But, <laughs> but you need to really, that's how I look at the perspective. You know, so would you then say that the role of the CEO has changed from essentially looking at his or her company from a purely, uh, you know, sales prism to uh, a prism where you actually have become an extremely good and prudent trend spotter. Do you think that there has been a shift or there needs to be a shift? <clears throat> I would say the challenge, I, I meet a lot of CEOs now, th now through BCG and uh, a lot of boards and so on. I think both the board and the CEO have a very clear view of that they need to change. Mm. Um, I often joke sometimes it's only, uh, it's only the people that work with the consumers and the CEO that cares about the consumer. Mm -hmm. Everyone else in the corporate is more interested in what's their boss's view and that's they're working true. for their boss. <laughs> that so is so true. And if that's, if that's the case, no one's really thinking of it. So mm -hmm. it's the, the only one that has. So the CEO has a very, very, very important perspective of defining how does good look like tomorrow. Right. And but then he needs to balance the old business model versus the new mm -hmm. again. And then you also need to bet on the new one. So, but yes, I think this, but I don't think it's different. I think we've seen this, you know, you know, we had horses, now we have cars, you know, there's so many board members that have seen products come and go. You had, sure. you know, sure. big televisions, now we had thin, now you had a cell phone. We've seen yeah. adaptions of change in many industries. And I think we need to see the same S curve in all industries here. True. Um, True. The challenge here is though, most of the businesses here have been linear. So you built one, you had one store, you had two, you had four, you know, you, mm. you built mm. stores. Mm. But with tech, you know, with Sky, Spotify, you know, all these Netflix, it's an exponential model. Yeah. So that means that you need to invest quite heavily in the beginning mm. to actually get returns through the exponential perspective. So that's where the scary part is, because yeah. when your business is starting to decline, mm you now need to invest heavily in the new technology. Right, right. Which means that you're heading a headwind on, on revenues from your old business model and then you need to take a lot of cost on the new one. Mm. And I think that is what pal that's the scary part. Mm. Uh, I'd be curious to know what Jonas is investing in right now or what he set his eyes on right now because you know you've, you seem to be a trend spotter of sorts. So what, what are you looking at uh, that is really exciting for you? So for me, really exciting, I think there's a lot around HR tech and, you know, about, you know, how we interact as humans, you know, the whole, um, all the things around, you know, healthcare. Oh, okay. Uh, I think there's a lot of things around that. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot around how do we communicate from a one-to-one -one perspective. If you look at today, if you take customer service, if you take all of these things, the, how do you create... Um, a one-to-one -one communication with every consumer. You mean from a brand point of view? Brand point of view. Wow, that's a very tough one. Yes, but, uh, but you know, technology allows it today. No, but I don't you think because of the technology explosion, the, the communication in terms of the one-on-one -on -one conversation a brand has with the consumer has actually gone through a tremendous breakdown because, you know, the mediums are so many. There's been an explosion of sorts. Marketers haven't, yes. haven't been ready to, you know, you know, grapple with what's coming their way and so they're all pretty confused and one cannot blame them because yes. technology is changing so fast. Yes. So the complexity of the landscape has really left the entire ecosystem in quite a mess. Yes, well you can see that and when I often see when I see an ecosystem in mess, I see it's, a, it's you the know, it's, a, it's an opportunity because it's, it's disrupted because you're clinging on to an old model and I would say if you use AI and technology of really understanding all your interactions, how do you build a new media channel or a TV channel that is only for a segment of one? You know, and how do you build that data? On That's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that, uh, especially in a world, uh, you know, and an industry where the costs are really coming on heavy and yeah. everybody is looking mm. at maintaining uh, the cost and profitability mm. balance mm. and, you know, are, are, are really, really under pressure mm. with new models. Yeah. Um, how do you, you know, then innovate and look at creating uh, a one-on-one -on -one kind of, of communication? Yeah, because I think, you know, you have a lot of data. It's about creating, how do I create the best content, but how do I deliver it to you based on what you're looking? I would, you know, being a bit disruptive, maybe I would say maybe Red Bull is going to be the biggest TV channel going forward. That's a, fair, that's, that's a good statement.
That's a good statement. Because they create yeah, a lot right. of content yeah, and yeah. they're very good at breaking it down to me as an individual. Sure. They have a lot of different channels. Yeah. Today they have channels, but they could probably build, you know, a unique Jonas Kjellberg channel. Yeah. If I'm into that, you know, motorsports or if it's, you know, surfing or whatever they're doing, skiing. Mm. They could build, you know, a lot. They could build. They're already quite good at it. But I think they see themselves not as a TV channel today, but they're selling their product. But they could probably evolve because those are the ones that could enable totally new technology because sure. they're still doing it quite linear. But there's that's where I would. Uh, that's that kind of understanding what the cons consumer wants and understand, and then delivering that is an interesting perspective. But now I'm a bit, you know, all over the place here when it comes to AI and technology. But it's basically how do you use AI for growth? Okay, so you're saying you're betting and punting on healthcare, on 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 communication tech, yeah, right, yeah. and uh, those are the main, the main, the main, the main, the main, the main, and then there's a, then there's some other things around, you know, how you can help the retail companies survive a bit longer, the offline retail, yeah, okay, fair enough, uh, you know. Uh, I'm uh, interested in getting your view on what you think of, of the whole data explosion and culling of data, uh, which, you know, so some schools have thought that it's been an absolute failure because you have the data, but what do you do with the data? Mm -hmm. And how do you utilize that data, uh, you know, in a manner that is most efficient? Because the whole hype and hoopla around big data, small data, little data, big data, whatever, uh, you know, has been going on for a while. But do you think people have actually cracked it? Companies have cracked it in terms of, I'm getting that data, but what do I do with that data? Companies that are investing or talking about, you know, what do we do with big data haven't really solved the main problem. Because it's not about big data, it's about what problem are you going to solve. If you agree on what problem you want to solve for the consumer, let's understand what data we should use to enhance the product. Mm, sure, sure. So it's a different approach. And I think large corporates say, okay, we need the big data lake, we need to fix this. And then based on that, then they start working. For me, it's about what problem do you want to solve for the consumer? Got it. What are you going to be unique? And based on that, then we'll understand mm. what data we need to enhance the product. Yeah. Jonas, you know, I, I know that you're also, uh, you know, you've invested a bit in the Indian market yeah. uh, as an investor in yeah. Jabong. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. So um, what is your view? I don't know if you've really studied the Indian startup space, really, and studied our unicorns. Uh, but I'd be curious to know what is your critique of the Indian startup uh, model? Uh, because, you know, suddenly in our nation, we have this... Uh, grand optimism around startups mm. uh, but what what one is finding via sheer observation um, is that you know while it's great that we're finally like having having the guts to start up I think a the models are all there is no true true disruption model mm. it's a lot of cut copy paste mm. and B I think a lot of uh, entrepreneurs or uh, new entrepreneurs are looking to start companies with the view of getting a good valuation and and a sell-off. The view is never to have a long-term sustainable business. So do you think these are right ways to approach uh, the startup world? Or do you think, uh, you know, one needs to change the way, uh, you know, they, they look at the, at the space? I think you, you need to start somewhere. And okay. I think, you know, um, just acknowledging that you know the startup community is an important community, I think that gives a lot of comfort as well for long entrepreneurs because you know that's where I started. You know, I had to go to my parents and say I'm going to start my own company, and they said no, please don't. And and then I did it again and again, and then I got a corporate job, and my mother was super happy because I had a corporate job and I had salary, I had family, and then I, when I quit the, to to join Skype, you know, she was no, please don't. Why? <laughs> Uh, you know, these I've read in the paper, these guys you're working with, they're criminals, they're getting sued from the whole music industry, they built Casal, they're not <laughs> good people. And, and, and her perception is she wanted to tell her friends that I had a corporate job and right. that I had a steady monthly salary. Right, right. Yes, so that, I think that the first perception is having the guts to come and tell your parents I'm going to do something different. The second part is basically getting the infrastructure here in India ready. You know, I'm, I'm advising IKEA on the, the digital uh, transformation and, and in their digital transformation council and uh, it's taking them you know 50 years to start 
uh, start a store here in, the, in India. That's true. Very uh, good. So, so there's yeah. there's a lot of hoops and regulations that you need to go through here. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, so yeah. I think that's the next thing of making it easy and supporting a lot of startups. It doesn't have to be super tech startup. There could be startups everywhere. You mm. have every city should have you know their uh, their their help for startups. Um, and then the third part, as, as you mentioned, I think the first part is you know copy paste. You've seen it in China, but now you're seeing, you know, you have OnePlus, you have Alibaba, you have all of these companies now uh, building unique products and challenging the tech challenges. Sure. So it's, 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 I think it's a step. Um, and also I, you have such a big domestic market, mm. which means that you're always going to build products for your domestic market. Sure. You can become a unicorn by just, you know, doing things Absolutely. here. Um, but the next bold thing is when you actually do something from day one addresses the globe, mm, sure. the world. Sure. Yeah, I think we've yet to, uh, you know, get, you've yet to crack that, don't you think so? But I think it's an evolving over time. But if you look at the tech talent, you look at the people you have in Silicon Valley, there's so much things. So I think if you, it will happen. It's just a matter of time. Sure, fair enough. Uh, great. That was uh, a lovely and insightful session, Yunus. Uh, truly lovely speaking with you. Thank and you. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you more often in India and you'll be investing in a lot more of our companies. Thank you very much. Thank you.